Hey, what's happening, guys? We're back again with the comparator circuit because there seems to be some confusion on that video, and that confusion is all my fault. So I want to clear it up, and I want to <clears throat> explain more about the comparator circuit and its uses. So first of all, for the gentleman that asked me about the voltage divider, my bad, man. This is 1K. This is 2.2K. So that's why your math wasn't seeming to work out right. I grabbed these things quick. I didn't really pay attention. I just needed something to give me a voltage as a reference. So again, that's my bad. So a quick refresher on the comparator. This is an op amp set up with no feedback. It compares the... Um, inverting input with the non-inverting input if the non-inverting input is higher than the inverting input it turns on the output it is an analog this part of the circuit is analog this part of the circuit is digital it is the basis of the analog to digital converter used in modern microcontrollers so I'm gonna power it up here and today we're putting nine volts into the circuit. Let's uh, let's check some values, some voltages. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so today we have the O1 B35T digital multimeter. So from our voltage divider, our reference voltage is now 6.2 volts. And right now, our analog input is at 6.0 volts. So one of the things you're going to notice about that yesterday's video and this video is that the comparator is incredibly sensitive to voltage. We're talking sensitive down to microvolts. So let's see if I can tweak this up to just the point that it turns on. I'm talking about just enough pressure on this and we'll see how close we got it to just barely coming over 6.2 volts. We got 6.22, 6.21 volts. So we're talking a tenth of a volt difference there. Now, like I said, oh, let's check the output as well, just so you guys can see. Inputting nine volts, not a rail to rail op amp. So we're getting out, call it 7.5 volts. So we're losing a volt and a half to the op amp. Now, like I said, the comparator circuit is the basis of the analog to digital converter. So what I've drawn up here is a basic analog to digital converter. We're using four op amps. Doesn't matter what they are. We have a 15 volt uh, positive rail and we have a zero volt negative rail and yes if you want to get nitpicky all of these go to the positive rail and then they also go to ground but I didn't put that in there just for the simplicity of the drawing <clears throat> so now we have voltage dividers here 1k and 1k each here we have voltage dividers here here is our input so when the input comes in every one of our op amps looks at it and if it meets the bottom if it is greater than this reference voltage which you can figure out by adding up 
12K plus 1K plus 1K plus 1K over 470K, then that output switches on and this LED lights. If it's greater than this reference voltage, these two light greater than the third, boom. And that gives you a basic idea of how the basic analog to digital converter works. Now, another viewer asked, why can't I use a Zener and a MOSFET? You can. There's no reason you can't. Nowhere in any video do I ever say this is the way it is done. This is the only way it is done. And if you don't do it this way, you're wrong. Because, buddy, that ain't how electronics works. If you make something that works, it, it serves your purpose. It does what you need it to do safely then that's the right way to do it for you. You don't have to do a circuit like this. You can make it any way you like. This is just me showing you how a comparator works. So, let's reconfigure our comparator for a real world example using a light dependent resistor to trigger a high current source. Whether it's to turn on a light bulb when it gets dark or whatever. Let me reconfigure our circuit and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've reconfigured the circuit as you guys can see. We now have an LDR set up as a voltage divider with a 270 ohm resistor. And we're using our potentiometer to adjust our reference value or trigger point. So the potentiometer now comes over to the inverting input and this voltage divider with the LDR goes to the non-inverting input. So when I turn this on, in this light, you can see that LED is on. That means that the relay is on. But when daylight comes out, you can now see the light is off because there is too much light on the LDR. Light on the LDR goes off. The relay comes on. And what's nice about this is you can use the pot to adjust at what level you want your relay to come on. You can say, okay, this is still too much light, but if it gets just a little bit darker, I want it to come on. But what you want to do basically is you want to set your point and say, okay, this is the point where I want the relay to come on. And then bang, the relay goes off, on, off. And we can check those voltages here again, like we have done in the past. So you can see our input voltage. With the relay and everything drawn some power is 5.71 volts. But I think if I come over here, yeah, that's right. And then our our value here from the LDR is 300 or 5.4 volts. And then let me get a light again. This might be kind of hard to do. Okay, so. There's our LDR in normal daylight, 5.4 volts, and when the light hits it, we drop down. And our potentiometer value, our reference value, our trigger point, 4.5 volts. So I hope that made things a little bit more clear for you guys. If it didn't, feel free to ask more questions here to help. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thank you to all my patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.